That is very important when giving advice to students about what to do with their GPA. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, where I take questions directly from the non-traditional pre-med discussion over at premedforms.com. If you haven't gone over there yet, register for an account. It is free and go ask your questions. That's where I pull the questions for this podcast. We're looking at potentially making that community even larger than it is. If you are looking to get away from Facebook and go somewhere else, then go over to premedforums.com. We're thinking about, again, making that a little bit bigger than it is or making it bigger than it is, making it a, a more central part of our community. Right now, Premed Hangout is at premedhangout.com, which is a private Facebook group on Facebook. So just a random sidebar about the Premed Forms. Go check it out. Again, that's where we pull questions for this podcast. Our question today is a question about next steps. Our student says, hello, I'm a 37-year-old wife, mom, and manager at an AMC. Both my undergrad and grad school GPA are a 3.2. My science GPA is a 2.13. Minimal to no volunteering or shadowing because of two toddlers, husband, and a full-time management job. Preparing to study for the MCAT, would like to apply next year for the 2022 class, so applying in 2021. What should I do to improve my chances going forward? Appreciate the advice. Thank you and be well during this time. All right, so really, really big obstacles here to overcome. Undergrad and grad school GPA of 3.2. Now, if you've watched my stuff, if you've listened to my podcast for a while, you know that I don't know what a 3.2 is. I don't know if there's an upward trend. I don't know if there's a downward trend. I don't know if it's flat. I don't know what that trend is. And that is very important when giving advice to students about what to do with their GPA. The bigger thing, though, is that 2.13 GPA. It doesn't really matter what that trend is because a 2.13 GPA tells me that the trends weren't big enough to really move the needle. And that is going to be a huge obstacle to overcome. And so in my mind, what this student needs to do is put off applying to medical school for many reasons. Number one, GPA. You have to have the academic ability, the the academic stats, to show medical schools that you can handle medical school. Now, I downplay stats all the time on this podcast, on the Primadiers, and everywhere else, but I'm not naive to the fact that stats matter. They matter. So I don't want you to ignore stats because they matter. They are there to show medical schools that you are not going to fail medical school, that you are going to hopefully pass your boards the first time you take them, right? And pass is is the language now, at least for step one, in the future as it's moving to pass-fail versus a scored test like it is now. You have to complete medical school in four years, pass your boards, or else the medical school looks bad. They get dinged when they go through their accreditation process. So they're looking for students who can do well. So when a student applies with a science GPA of 2.13, that is not showing the school that they can do well. And so what this student to do can, should do, regardless of anything else in their application, is do a post back and fix those grades. All right, the student mentioned already having a grad school GPA. And so I don't know what the graduate school was. I don't know if it was a science grad graduate school, uh, non-science graduate school, whatever it was. This student needs to do a post back, and and most likely, and what I would recommend is an undergraduate level post back. And the problem with those is they are very expensive. And to do it right, probably this student may need to go full time, which means stepping away from a job, meaning stepping away from income meaning stepping away from childcare, meaning maybe the husband has to do a little bit more, right? So there are lots of obstacles in the way for this student, but they're overcomable as long as she can set up her life in the way that will help her be successful in this journey. So step one, improve that GPA. You have to improve the GPA. Stop studying for the MCAT, 
your GPA tells me you're not going to do well in the MCAT, right? It's very unlikely that your study habits and the foundation that you have based on your GPA is going to set you up for success on the MCAT, All right? It's not impossible to crush the MCAT with a 213 science GPA, but it's highly unlikely. And, and a 528 MCAT score isn't going to help overcome that 213 science GPA. Stop studying for the MCAT, do a post back. period. The other big red flag here is minimal to no volunteering or shadowing. How do you know you wanna be a doctor if you don't have any volunteering, don't have any shadowing? I'm assuming the volunteering is the same as clinical experience. It's a uh, common that students mix up those two words. So no clinical experience, no shadowing, or very little, and yet you're applying to medical school saying, I want to be a doctor. And especially right now with COVID, and, and this, this question was asked at the very beginning of COVID, but with COVID, there's no shadowing and no clinical experience happening right now, which is why I set up eshadowing.com. Go check it out. Uh, and, and so there's just so many things working against this student that will likely mean failure or rejection when it comes to applying to medical school. So for this student, I don't think there's anything to improve chances for the 2021-2022 application cycle. In, in my mind, you should not apply this coming year as you're watching this, whatever year this is, uh, this coming year in 2021, do, do not apply then. Apply for a post back get a master's, or not a master's, get a, get a post-bac, do 30 to 40 to 50 credits in a post-bac program, which is a lot. But your age also tells me that you've probably been out of school for a long time too. So you have some time to get back into being a student, prove that you have overcome, that now uh, I'm assuming that you know what you want to do being a physician. You are on that path, on that journey you are dedicated to this, you have the grades, hopefully your, your post back is as close to a 4.0 as possible. Then apply to medical school, or obviously take the MCAT, and during your post back, you're getting the clinical experience, you're getting the shadowing, obviously assuming COVID's over, or you get a job where you are potentially putting yourself at a little bit of risk working in a clinical environment during this time, but if you need to get some experience, that's potentially a way to do it. So lots of things going on with this student, with this question. Hopefully that's helpful. I think it's, it's very common, specifically in this situation, where you have an older non-traditional student who has a family and is just ready to start medical school. And, and it's just like, well, I have this red flag and this red flag and this red flag and this red flag, but I'm applying... How can I polish up my turd, right? A polished turd is still a turd. And so uh, it, it's very common for non-traditional students to rush an application because the, the proverbial clock is ticking, if that's the right word to use there. The clock is ticking and, and they feel that and they go, I need to get to medical school. I need to start my life. But you have to prove that you can get in and, and actually succeed in medical school. And this is a very common trap for students who are, are on this journey and, and they get to this point in their life and they go, I don't have any more time to quote unquote waste to do a post back. I don't have any more money to quote unquote waste to do a post back. And they go, I'm going to go to the Caribbean because they'll accept me and right? I'll take my MCAT. I'll do well enough. They'll accept me with my poor GPA. They'll accept me with, with my lack of clinical experience and, and shadowing, et cetera. And what happens is a student fails in a Caribbean medical school. Caribbean medical schools are not easy. They're harder. You have to do better. And so I don't want a student in this situation to run to the Caribbean because they think that is the faster path. That has a lot of potential issues doing that. The Caribbean is a valid option for a lot of people but you still have to prove that you can handle Caribbean coursework. So 
Hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have a question you want answered on the old pre-meds podcast, go to premedforms.com, click on the non-traditional pre-med discussion, register for an account if you don't already have one, ask your question there, and hopefully it'll be answered here on the podcast. Don't forget to check out eshadowing.com. What is eshadowing? It is shadowing in the COVID world. Now, unfortunately, shadowing is canceled for almost everyone. And there's no easy way to replicate shadowing. And so I started eshadowing.com as an interview series with physicians going over cases, talking about their day-to-day life and what it's like, et cetera. It's not shadowing. I'm not claiming that it's shadowing. Eshadowing is a cool name though. So I called it eshadowing. You should put it on your application. What schools will do with it, I don't know. Maybe most schools will say, what is this? It doesn't count as shadowing, but it's better than nothing, especially right now. So go to eshadowing.com. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we have pre-med eshadowing. And starting tonight, actually, as I'm recording this on November 2nd, we have uh, eshadowing for pre-PA students. So we have e-shadowing for pre-meds, e-shadowing for pre-PA students. E-shadowing for pre-PA students starts at 7 p.m. Eastern every Monday. All the links can be found at eshadowing.com. It's free for everyone. Replays are available through Sunday night for attendance, and then they'll be put up on YouTube after that. Again, eshadowing.com. Have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.